The 90s was the time to be alive. We had Tamagotchis, Pogs, collected Beanie Babies because they were going to be worth a fortune in the 2000s. Every commercial on TV looked like a fever dream. The news talked about Y2K, saying the world might end, but who cares? We got Surge. The 90s was also the golden age of Nickelodeon. Rugrats. Clarissa explains it all. Salute your shorts. All that. The adventures of Pete and Pete. We had computers, but people really only used them to play pinball and solitaire. People didn't really get into computers until we realized you could legally download music and movies. It'd take like five days to download X-Men, and when you watch it, it's a woman having sex with a dog. Then you download another movie, and it's the woman having sex with a dog again. Every movie you tried to download back then would be the woman having sex with a dog video. Anyways, now that we use computers, people write on message boards about disturbing theories they have about some of these classic Nickelodeon shows. And tonight, we're going to go over them. Let's dive in. Some people believe Rocco's Modern Life is one of the most perverted series to ever be on a children's cartoon station. Those who grew up watching this series might be confused upon hearing this, but this show is full of sexual innuendos that go over children's heads. On RoccosModernLife.Fandom.com, fans have put together a list of all the innuendos throughout the series. Some are more vague, but some, it's obvious what they're doing. One example, being the chicken restaurant on the show is called Choky Chicken. If you're in the mood for chicken that looks good, tastes good, and even smells good, come on down to the Choky Chicken. We started small in O-Town, but we done gone global. Chicken as far as the eye can see. It's like the ones at home. It's a theory if the innuendo was or was not intentional, and I could see some of these jokes being debated by fans. Others, not so much. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco. Mrs. Bighead? The pilot episode of the show Are You Afraid of the Dark originally premiered on a Canadian television station Halloween night, 1990. Then a year later, Nickelodeon aired it as a special. If you've never seen this show, it's an anthology series. A group of kids from different schools would meet out in the woods and tell spooky stories by the campfire they call their club the Midnight Society. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. We call this story The Tale of Cutter's Treasure. The theory about this show is that the kids out in the woods telling these stories are dead themselves. And whenever they would bring in a new member into the club, it was actually a kid who recently died and is now a spirit. On August 11th, 1991, The Ren and Stimpy Show aired its first episode. This series lasted five seasons, and this show was something else. This show is about a chihuahua named Ren and a minx cat called Stimpy. They go on adventures together. Stimpy is the stupid one, and Ren is the one with the bad temper. I'm so angry! There's a theory behind the show, and it is that Ren and Stimpy are victims of abuse. This theory comes from them showing signs of real life abuse. The Wild Thornberries is about a family that travels the world. The mother and father of this family shoot a nature show. The main character of the show is a young girl named Eliza Thornberry. She could talk to animals and she got this power because she helped a shaman who thanked her by giving her this ability, and she has to keep it secret. There is a theory that there wasn't really a shaman. Eliza took acid, and she thinks she's talking to animals, when in reality, she's just tripping. On October 7th, 1996, the cartoon Hey Arnold premiered. It follows this fourth grader with a football-shaped head named Arnold. He lives with his grandparents in the ghetto. There's a lot of dark storylines in this show. The character Helga, who bullies Arnold, actually has an unhealthy obsession with him because Arnold is nice to her and her home life is ass. Her mom is an alcoholic and her parents ignore her. There's a lot of theories about this show. One I want to talk about 
is a character who is on one episode, but it's one, if not the most popular episode of the series. It's about an older kid who lives on a stoop. Kids call him Stoop Kid, and he's afraid to leave his stoop. The theory is, Stoop Kid is actually a lookout for a drug operation. SpongeBob SquarePants made its debut July 17, 1999, and it quickly became a smash hit. To this day, it's the most popular show to ever be on Nickelodeon, along with it being their longest running series. With a show that popular that's been airing now for over 20 years, there's going to be some theories out there. One of them being that the show is an allegory for the seven deadly sins. Each of the main characters represents sloth, pride, greed, gluttony, lust, envy, and wrath. There's another theory that the place where they all live, Bikini Bottom, is actually based on a real island the United States would test nuclear weapons on during the Cold War. There's a theory that SpongeBob died in the movie from 2004, and sponges are able to reproduce asexually. People think maybe the SpongeBob that they follow after 2004 isn't the same SpongeBob. Cat Dog is a show about a cat and a dog who are conjoined at the ass. If you're wondering how they go to the bathroom, it comes out of their mouths. The show came out in 98 and was canceled in 2005. Nickelodeon put well over $300 million into this show, expecting it to be a hit, but it didn't do too good in the ratings. One of the fan theories is that Cat Dog became fused together from radiation, and this show takes place in the nuclear apocalypse. The series Rugrats began August 11th, 1991, and I think the original run ended in 94, but it was brought back. They brought it back several times, and it's spin-offs, and there were movies. It was a really popular show. It had the legendary Kath Stussy, who was the voice of like every animated series in the 90s. How come you got the purple one and I only got green? Cause green is your favorite color. Oh, yeah. The theory behind this one is that the babies aren't really there, and Angelica is imagining them. When in reality, Chucky died with his mom, Tommy was stillborn, Betty DeVille had an abortion, and Angelica didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl, so she imagined twins. They had some really creepy episodes. I remember there was one where Chucky was a reptilian, and the infamous one where Chas has a nightmare. Stu, I didn't know you were coming over. I'm not Stu. <laughs> Something that isn't a theory, but it's worth mentioning. The animators of Rugrats wrote out a joke episode where Tommy puts Drano in Angelica's drink and Stu has sex with Angelica. We talked about it briefly in a Lost Media video, but there's other creators who go more in depth about it. If you're opening another tab right now, it's called... Rugrats Storyboard Jam. The Adventures of Pete and Pete was my favorite show growing up. It's such a nostalgic show. If you didn't live through the 90s and want to see what it looked like, watch this show. The show is about two brothers who are both named Pete. The show is narrated by the older brother who is a nerd and the younger Pete is a troublemaker. He has a big ass tattoo on his arm even though he's like nine years old. There's a theory that there's no little brother. There's only the older Pete, and he has schizophrenia, and he's imagining another Pete who is doing all the things he wanted to do when he was younger. The first episode of Doug came out August 11th, 1991. The show started out on Nickelodeon, but was then later moved onto the Disney Channel. Hey, I'm Hilary Duff from Lizzie McGuire, and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> The show is about this kid named Doug Funny who moves to Bluffington with his family. He's got a dog named Porkchop and a pretentious sister named Judy. A lot of the show, Doug would always write in his journal and he'd daydream a lot. Doug likes to imagine himself as a superhero called Quail Man and there's a theory that he's imagining this because he was abused. There's a neighbor on the show named Mr. Dink and some people think Dink diddle Doug Thank you all for watching this video. 
We've been doing nothing but icebergs on this channel for about four months now. It's nice to do something different. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.